This is Crossing Cultures, Changing Lives, and I'm Kitty Oliver. In this episode, we're going to meet some people from a variety of backgrounds who are searching for answers in many different ways. Society changes when pioneers venture out, push the boundaries, and dare to try something new. Innovation requires flexibility, however. You must anticipate moves and circumvent obstacles to adapt to a new situation. That's how the ancient outlawed African capoeira has survived in Brazilian culture as a game, an art, and a metaphor for life. At the Afro-Brazilian Cultural Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Master Pelé and his family do their part to teach the history and keep the practice alive while grappling with the racial and ethnic dilemmas they've had to face in American life. When I moved here, I first came to Minnesota. And I, that's when I first realized that we were separated because in Minnesota there were blacks, there were whites, and there were Cambodians. They didn't have anybody that looked like me. I wasn't too white and I wasn't too dark, so I was like out of place. And that's when I noticed that I had some black friends in Brazil. <laughs> I didn't realize it until I actually moved here. The racism in Brazil is different. It's, different from it's way different than here. Here there is a lot more hate, hate than, than I think in Brazil. Like you say, you know, in Brazil, I mean, if, if you see a black man, you probably might think, oh, he might want to steal your purse, depending on what he's wearing and things like that. It really depends on how you dress yourself here. I think the racism here is a lot more different. And also, different. about job in Brazil, it's black people, they, they don't find like a good job. The job that they find is like a, that's a, not a nice job. It's very hard to find a good job in Brazil. Most of the white people, they get the, the best job. Even for bank, a lot of people work in the banks, like uh, people like white people work in the bank. You probably see one, maybe two, but not as a better position, you know what I mean? And this, that's how they discriminate in the capoeira. There was their weapon that they did, so they were not allowed to practice because if they practice that, they would practice to defend themselves or lend their master, so they had to practice in secret. And that's why they use it as a dance, because the slaves like to dance, they have to do all, like to do all the ceremony, all the stuff. So that's why they have to use it as a dance, just like a ceremony, for just to disguise the capoeira. That's why the music and the acrobatics part, they play a big role because they weren't allowed to do anything that has to do with defending themselves. So that's why when their masters would come to, you know, to say, what are they doing? What are they doing? It's actually, oh, they're just doing a type of dance, but it's really not. It's, it is a, a martial art. It was a, it was a way for them to defend themselves, but that's why they have music and acrobatics in it. So when they started to know that the, they have their martial art, the capoeira, so they started to put people that was practicing that. They were going to jail. They will suffer as a uh, stay in a in a back room like they do in a prison. So they were not allowed to practice. Yeah, when they found out that they were really doing it to defend themselves, they banished those. They, they those were like <laughs> yeah. they were the criminals. <laughs> like they, they were criminals. They were the criminals. Actually, there was a there was a, a bunch of capoeiristas that there was like as a criminal too. You That's know, why it wasn't the beginning. They were going and stretching and, and, and fighting and stealing. stealing. Using. Yeah. That's why the capoeira before was it's, not. It was legal. prohibited. It was prohibited. Now, all over the world, everybody doing capoeira. You can see like lawyers, doctors, anybody. Policemen, policemen everybody doing it. Some people do it for the fitness because it's an excellent way to stay fit. Some people do it because they're really interested in a culture. But I think. The main reason people really enjoy it is because to learn, be open-minded, learn all their, all their cultures. A lot of people from other places, other countries come here and train and then I like start knowing them and become friends. It's really important about like how it's growing everywhere. It's going to other countries, cities and everywhere. Yes. Capoeira in Israel, you know, you can go to, I don't know, if, some place that you Indian. You would have never imagined. That's capoeira in Indian. So that is it's different because we teach the capoeira in a 
We teach uh, our, our culture from Brazil, a folklore. Folklore? Folklore, folklore from Brazil. They don't want to, they don't want to learn the, the, the martial art. They learn playing the instrument, they learn Portuguese because they sing in, in all Portuguese. All the songs in Portuguese. They sing all the Portuguese, saints they, all know? the kids sing in Portuguese. And, uh, the, it's a good education for the kids especially. To be open-minded to, to the open world. Mind. We say the game. Because we're not fighting we're each not other. Fight. We're, not we're really just fight. playing. We're having fun and we're enjoying it. It does get tough, but it's all a game. It's a tough game it, because Capoeira teaches how to be alert. Some people, they're, they're, they want to be better than others. And then they lose the game. Let's say if I gave them a rasteira. A rasteira means a sweep. When you sweep somebody, that's part of Capoeira. That is part of the game. But some people can't handle that. So when, what do they do? They get up and they already want to start punching. And that's when you leave the game. You fell. You, it was your fault that you fell because it was your mistake. He got you. It's a game. Get up and try to get him in the game, not out of the game. So I've thought about it. Maybe that means we human beings are just the original dysfunctional family. Playing favorites, nursing grudges, but there's no way of getting rid of each other. So that means we have to keep on working to build bridges, one by one, telling our stories. You keep telling yours too. <laughs>